Good morning, my name's Laura Joyner and welcome to the Daily Advent Reflections from Christchurch, Chorley Wood. This morning I'd like to talk to you um, about a, a piece of scripture from Luke's Gospel, chapter 13, verse 16. It's only very short, but it's very, very impactful. I find it very impactful and hopefully when we've sort of unpacked it a little bit, you will too. I know we've been hearing all week um, about the character of, of John the Baptist from various other reflections. Um, but this particular scripture um, speaks very powerfully about the coming of the Holy Spirit. So without further ado, I shall read it to you. So it says, John answered them all, I baptise you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come, the straps of whose sandals I'm not worthy to untie. He will baptise you with the Holy Spirit and fire. So as I've said, we've been looking all week at the character of John the Baptist um, with the lead up of his um, the commencement of Jesus's ministry. But at this point, we're picking it up where John's popularity is really growing and his, his actions are attracting all sorts of questions on the matter of salvation by the crowd, all sorts of different people. Um, and they're also sort of wondering about his true identity. You know, is he the Messiah? Is he the one that's been foretold? But he answers... I baptise you with water, but the one who is more powerful than I will come, with the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie, he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit and fire. So John's really, really quick to deny that he's the Messiah. And he explains that he's encouraging everybody to embrace a baptism of repentance. And that baptism is through water, um, which is technically the symbol of, of turning away from their sins of idolatry and all sorts of things that they'd sort of fallen into, all sorts of sins that they'd fallen into. Um, and he immediately references to Jesus, you know, the other who will be more powerful than he, that who will come with a completely different type of baptism. We'll, we'll come to that. In, in a moment. The thing that I find really striking in all of this is that um, John's unwavering obedience to God's plan, his, his striking sort of servanthood in his work of preparing the hearts of the Israelites for the coming of Jesus. Um, he's also referred to actually in Matthew's Gospel chapter 3 verses 2 and 3 um, as the fulfilment of the words of the prophet Isaiah um, saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Um, this is he, John, who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight paths for him. The humility contained in this passage is so striking. I mean, it would have been so easy for John to make out that his role of preparation was as important as the work that Jesus was coming to do himself. And, and I must admit, it's sort of quite easy, isn't it, sometimes to think that all the good results that you might do in, you know, in your serving or how you help people is, is your own doing. Well, that's a really easy trap to fall into. And I think it's really important to remember that whatever gifts we have, whatever commission we're given by God, um, that it's by God's grace and, and, and not our own. And I think John the Baptist really helps us to remember this as he goes on to say, as I've already mentioned, but one more powerful than I will come whose straps of sandals I'm not worthy to untie. So, you know, and that humility is sort of explained in the way that, you know, back in the day, sandals were, the, I think, the footwear of choice for Israelites. Um, but can you imagine the, you know, the heat in the Middle East, the the dust, the dirt from unmade roads, the sweat, the horrible, it, it would have just been a foul job to untie anybody's sandals. But John describes himself as even unworthy to do that. He's so self-effacing and it just highlights even more the glory of the one to come, Jesus. Um, and that's how we need to, to be. Everything that we do in our lives needs to point towards Jesus, not not to ourselves. Um, so, the, I mean, the key bit for me is that when John then says, he will baptise you, Jesus, that is, with the Holy Spirit and fire, you know, God's plan was that John's mission would be to prepare the Israelites for this gift, this gift of the Holy Spirit, so they could actually receive it. Now, the Israelites needed to have the, the doors of their hearts opened by repentance, as we do 
um, and countless generations before us as well, um, receiving the Holy Spirit is an absolute privilege of every believer and an, an awesome gift of, of grace. So that when we recognise our own sin and want to, in, you know, to turn and embrace the way, the truth and the life of Jesus Christ, then we can then also be filled with the presence of the Holy Spirit who then guides us and counsels us and comforts us and strengthens us and brings peace and, and all those wonderful list of characteristics that just go on and on and on. And I know in my life this has made such a huge difference. I know that I'm never alone that I always have the Holy Spirit with me and that when I'm worried or anxious or or I'm overjoyed about something, I'm, I share everything with him and, and I trust the plan that he has for my life um, because he's shown to, to be trustworthy in everything that, that I hand over to him and it's something that is again it's such a huge gift so this still small voice that I have in my heart is also the lamp at my feet and has made my what sometimes would be quite confused paths actually really quite straight and so you know and it all harks back to this this preparation this preparation that that John the Baptist did with the Israelites all those centuries ago preparing the way for Jesus and you know we we have that gift, we have that gift of the Holy Spirit to prepare our hearts to receive Jesus. So this Christmas, let's just remember that it was the Holy Spirit of God who conceived Jesus Christ, our Saviour, the light of the world, that same Holy Spirit who lives in our hearts and who loves us. So prepare your heart for the birth of that new baby, born in the lowliest of places, the humblest of places, to actually become the king of your heart and of your life. So I'd just like to pray for us all. Um, let's, let's, let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the example of John the Baptist, his willing obedience and humility to prepare the hearts of others to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Please prepare our hearts in the same way, Lord, that we may fully know the wonderful promise of salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord, and that we too can point others towards the beauty and love of our Heavenly Father. So, Amen. So, as I was thinking about preparing, preparing for the birth of Jesus, preparing our hearts, preparing our lives to be witnesses towards for other people, to point them towards Jesus, one song really came to mind and it's not a typical Christian um, hymn or carol or anything like that um, but it's one that really does encapsulate this whole scripture and it's actually from the musical Godspell and it's prepare ye the way of the Lord and the lyrics are very simple and straightforward and a bit like the paths that we are preparing in our hearts um, so I hope you enjoy it um, anyway, have a wonderful Christmas, everyone. God bless you.